rise of the Israelites uh, and all that. So we're going to talk about the background uh, of the Israelites uh, and who they were. Uh, of course, the Israelites, you know, uh, were a Semitic people like the Phoenicians were. The Phoenicians, you know, lived around Canaan, uh, except they were in uh, where we call modern Lebanon. That's uh, about it. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, Israelites later called Hebrews and then now called the Jewish people or Jews, uh, of course, lived around where part of Israel is today and maybe part of Jordan as well, which is next to it uh, as well. Uh, they're not known for much. They weren't really, you know, a powerful people like a state, which they were a long time ago, kingdom of Israel. Uh, but they're a people that popularized monotheism. Uh, you know about that. Uh, they would develop, you know, Judaism uh, as their main religion uh, over time. Uh, but they would, you know, if you know about it, they influenced other um, Abrahamic religions, as they call it, like, um, you know, uh, Christianity and Islam, which will follow later uh, afterwards. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much what they're what they're known for. Uh, and, of course, the early religion, you know, it's known as, of course, Judaism is what they call it. That's the main slide, of course. I've got in the PowerPoint just the basic points I'll cover today uh, in class. Uh, and um, they worship a God you probably have heard of named Yahweh, which is spelled different ways. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Uh, I think there's no real way, I guess, to really spell it because nobody's around that pronounced it back then. So uh, there's kind of a debate about how it's pronounced. But Yahweh is or Yahweh is usually the common name uh, of what the Hebrew God was originally. And then later uh, over time in the, like the Catholic Church uh, in medieval times, I want to say may have been thir 13th century maybe is when it was, uh, they started using the term Jehovah. Uh, if you know about that, uh, Jehovah. And Jehovah became, you know, the, the, the term that they use also for the same thing, which in the Christian religion, it's kind of seen as also being like God or part of God, along with Jesus also as well uh, today. Um, so, uh, but Jews don't really, um, you know, use that name anymore. They stopped using it. Uh, I forget how when it was, but may, I forget. It was sometime around the temple period. I mean, they stopped using it or whatever. But uh, the term they started using was um, Adonai is the common uh Hebrew name that a lot of Jews use today, which can mean either um, Lord or Master, basically in Hebrew. There's all kinds of names for God, and like in Judaism, there's all kinds of names for God. Hashem, you may have heard of that name. Eloheinu, you know, there's all there's a bunch of you know, that Jews use, of course, uh, overall. Now, the main source, uh, you know, for like the history of the uh, Israelites or Hebrews, like like in the Bible, is the Old Testament. Uh, of course, which the Old Testament is like a Christian name that Christians use, uh, you know, Old Testament. Uh, and um, uh, of course, the New Testament that they have later, you know, written about 2,000 years ago, uh, roughly, or about 2,000 years ago. Uh, and um, it's the major source on, you know, their people, um, a lot of the history of the, you know, the, the layer of the Jewish people uh, overall. There's different names for the Old Testament. There's like, you know, there's different parts of it that have different names that they, they often call it. Uh, and uh, like Jews don't really call it the Old Testament. They'll call it, you know, maybe the Hebrew Bible, uh, maybe, or something like that. Or Christians will use that term, maybe. But most Jews will use the term uh, Tanakh. That's the use of the, the Hebrew term for the Hebrew Bible. I do have a slide showing that, I believe. Uh, where they get these names. Here's like kind of a slide here about, you know, the about who they were. They weren't a big people, you know, the, the Israelites, you can see. Uh, of course, influenced Christianity, Islam, shaped a lot of the beliefs of a lot of Euro-Americans uh, later. Most of the books of the Bible we're talking about, like in the Tanakh or Old Testament, uh, were pretty much uh, compiled uh, down to the time of maybe when the Babylonian captivity takes place. So it's kind of around that time when the, it's like probably over a period of less than a thousand years that the Bible is kind of compiled. It wasn't compiled like the New Testament at one, one time, which is around the fourth century CE, but over hundreds of years uh, that it took. 
Yeah, they are known for being herders, like sheep herders and things like that, uh, which you see there. But um, yeah, this is where they get the name to knock. It's usually from like three. Uh, it's like a uh, what we call an acrostic. If you know what an acrostic is, uh, and um, an acrostic uh, is like um, a term where it's like an acronym, uh, and it's made up of three parts. Like Jessica, Jessica, okay, coming in, okay. Um, now, um, so you got like the law, which is the Torah, which is the main part, uh, which the Torah um, is like the first five books of the Old Testament. So you see Genesis, Exodus, Le Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy uh, that you see there. Uh, then, of course, you got the prophets. You see there the next part, uh, Nevi'im or Nevi'im, uh, basically. Uh, and, uh, of course, it's got the book of the prophets, Joshua, Judges, Samuels, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all, uh, the 12 uh, also other there that you got there, minor ones that are in there, prophets as well. Uh, and uh, then you got the writings, Ketavim or Ketavim, uh, of course, is the other one. So other writings in the Bible. So that's how they come up with it. Uh, so it's like T and K. We see that uh, in that slide. You got the T, you got the N, you got the K to knock. That's where it comes from, basically. Also, you see here, besides the Torah being called the five books of Moses, there is a, a Greek name they call it to Pentateuch, which you may have heard of, which means five books in Greek. And so that's the other name that they sometimes call the five books of Moses or Torah as well. So anyways, just kind of talking about the, you know, the basically um, all of that. Now, you got the patriarchs, of course, um, you know, that's important, too, that are uh, in, in the Bible uh, as well. Uh, these, of course, the three greatest patriarchs, you know, um, in the book of Genesis uh, is, of course, uh, Abraham. Uh, of course, you got Isaac and, of course, Jacob. You, know, that you got, um, of course, you see the word patriarch is a term that really from Latin uh, means great father, uh, basically, you term they probably developed over time. Mostly appear in the Genesis 12 to 50 in the uh, Old Testament. Uh, they're seen as the founding fathers of the nation, nation of Israel. Uh, of course, the first one you see there uh, is Abraham. Uh, you've got, so you got Abraham first. Uh, I think, do I have a picture of Abraham? Yeah, there they are, the, the main patriarchs. So Abraham was like the father of the many nations. Um, he's kind of seen as the father of the Hebrews. Uh, he's also not just the father of the Hebrews. Uh, he's also seen as the father of like the Arabs. Uh, the Arabs kind of, you know, trace their lineage back uh, through Abraham. Well, they say Abraham, I think is how the Arabs pronounce it, of course, uh, as well. And he originally was from, they say Ur, which was in southern Iraq uh, in uh, he and his wife, Sarah, eventually migrated, you know, westward into the land of Canaan, where they took up land there. Uh, and um, he had two sons, of course, uh, you may have heard of. Uh, Isaac, of course, one that's the main one in the Bible, uh, they always talk about. And then Ishmael. Ishmael is the one that the Arabs are related back to, of course. And then the Jews are related back to, uh, of course, Isaac. So it's like, in a sense, the Arabs and the Jews are kind of like brothers, you know, or half brothers, uh, in a sense. They kind of sometimes don't like each other, <laughs> you know, about that. <laughs> I've got a friend who's like Arab, and he's from Syria, and he's, we call each other brothers, you know. So we, we're, we're, we're cool with each other, you know, and all that. Uh, but um, so anyway, that's basically, you know, Abraham. Abraham is like, you know, like I said, the father of Judaism, early Judaism. He was the one that got them, got the, them to smash all their idols and worship one God, which I guess was Yahweh, you know, so they call their God uh, and all that. So that's why Abraham's, you know, kind of seen as important. So you got Abraham, you got Isaac. I probably won't talk much about Isaac. Uh, but then you've got also, uh, of course, his other son, um, which is uh, Jacob, you know, Jacob course, in the Bible as well in, in uh, Genesis. And uh, of course, by uh, Jacob, he has the grandson, of course, of Abraham. They called him Israel. You know, that that's where the name Israel uh, originates from. He had like a bunch of women, like a ton of women. Uh, he had two wives, Leah and Rachel, and he had these two handmaidens 
named Bilhab and Zilpah. Zilpah. You may have heard of them. Uh, and he had like 12 kids with them, 12 sons. Actually, 12 sons, and he had some daughters too. The two daughters? Oh, well, he had two daughters as well. But he had 12 sons, of course, um, with them. Uh, and uh, those 12 uh, sons eventually become the 12 tribes of Israel that you see there, uh, which I don't think you really got to know the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm not glad you have to know that, but those are the 12, 12 sons of Jacob. And so that's where we get the 12 tribes, you know, from uh, basically. Of course, the most famous one is Judah. You know about that's where the word Jewish or Jew, Judaism or Jew comes from originally, later from the kingdom of Judah. That's why that King David's descended from the house of Judah, uh, you know, uh, and uh, or, or really tribe of Judah. Uh, but those are the 12, 12, you know, sons of, of course, of um, of Jacob. So so basically, uh, yeah, they lived in Israel for a while. And then, of course, uh, over time, you can see they later migrated eventually to Egypt, which there's different theories on why that happened. But uh, the common theory, of course, uh, is that it was um, because of famines that were going on like in the land of Canaan, Israel. Uh, and so that's why a lot of them left uh, in all that. Uh, so um, you move on. To, um, so yeah, then they have the story of uh, Joseph you may have heard about. You've probably heard of that. That's a very famous story. I and mean, one of the most famous stories, I think, in the book of Genesis, I think, I think, um, overall. Uh, and... Um, you know about Joseph, he had these brothers, all these mothers of his, you know, the sons of, you know, Jacob. They were really jealous of um, of Joseph. Um, his father gave him this multicolored coat, you know, coat of many colors. Uh, and then if you know about um, Joseph, he had this knack for interpreting dreams. You'd have a dream or something and you'd tell him and he'd tell you what it's about. It really annoyed them, I think, about that. And so his brothers eventually sold him into slavery. Uh, some merchants that were traveling through Canaan. <laughs> so he ends up being sold into slavery, uh, basically. And uh, and so Jacob Jacob eventually moves down there. Of course, uh, it's part of the so-called migration of the, you know, of the Israelites later on all that. And uh, 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 Joseph later becomes this uh, vizier, like a like a powerful minister. Uh, to one of the pharaohs of Egypt. And he's later, you know, reunited with his brothers later. Uh, so all these, you know, Israelites, eventually Hebrews, start migrating um, to, to Egypt uh, at that point. And uh, I think they say that Jacob's like the, one of the only original patriarchs that they say was buried in Egypt um, at one point. So that's how basically they say the Israelites uh, moved there. And uh, like in the Bible, I think they kind of figured out that within several generations uh, that the Israelites may have, or Hebrews may have been like several hundred thousand people living there. Uh, it's, it's a long time. There's a kind of a debate about how long they're there, maybe 300 years around that time. It's about how long it is. And what happens is people forget about the good things that Joseph did when he was vizier to one of the pharaohs. Uh, and so the um, Israelites end up being enslaved, uh, if you know about that. There's a big debate about when they come in. Uh, you know, um, the uh, Israelites, so there's Joseph and his brothers, I got a little slide there, but it's a big debate about when they came in. I told you about Josephus before, uh, Flavius Josephus, uh, the Jewish historian that's writing about the time about 2,000 years ago, around Roman times, and uh, he claims uh, in the Jewish antiquities that um, possibly the uh, Hebrews may have come in at about the same time as the Hyksos invasion, which Hyksos invasion came in about, it's kind of debated about when it was, 18th or 17th century B.C., so a long time ago, uh, during the so-called Second Intermediate Period. That's that period between the Middle and New Kingdoms of Egypt. So they may have come in. And so that maybe that's why Moses is like a prince, you know, if you think about it, um, of Egypt as a, as a Hebrew, because the Hyksos were at one point rulers of Egypt. So it's, that's possibly the link of why that happens. And 
Uh, Josephus gets his story from this Egyptian writer I told you about named Manetho. I mean, I mentioned about, he wrote a book about Egypt. Some people think it's propaganda, I'm trying to make the you know, Jews look bad or whatever, which a lot of people like to do today. But um, but anyway, as you know, like the Israelites, uh, of course, get enslaved. Uh, and of course, the book of Exodus, which is the main story, uh, of course, about that. Uh, it's about the, the prophet Moses uh, and how he's able to free uh, the Israelites from Egyptian bondage, slavery, uh, with help from God, of course. Uh, and um, at the time, I told you how the Israelites were becoming too many people, which the Pharaoh wasn't happy about. And so the Pharaoh decided he was going to kill all the firstborn males. Yeah, infanticide, of course, you see there. Uh, and... Um, and so Moses uh, later, if you know about his mother, uh, who her, his mother was uh, uh, Jochebed, I think her name is. Yeah, Jochebed. Uh, she put Moses in a basket and floated him on the Nile River. Uh, and uh, one of the Pharaoh's daughters found him and raised him as her, her own, as her, his own son. And I think the name Moses or Moshi, which is the Hebrew name, uh, is a name that means to take from the waters, like from the Nile. So that's where the name came from. Uh, Manetho also said that Moses was called another name, Osarseph, and he was some kind of Egyptian priest of some type. Manetho, uh, and he later changed his name to Moses. So there's kind of a debate about, you know, that other name, that Egyptian name that he may have been called. I don't know about that, if that's really true or not. Uh, Moses later flees Egypt. Uh, I think he killed a fellow Egyptian, was put into exile, uh, and he later wandered uh, and to a place called, I don't know if you're the land of Midian, which is somewhere to the east of Egypt. He, he lived there for a while. And then uh, he discovered Mount Sinai, which I'll talk about later. Uh, and he's told by God to go back and free his people. And so that that's how Moses ends up, you know, being this prophet that uh, is going to try to free you know, the Israelites from bondage. He takes his brother, Aaron, if you know about that, who's involved, who's later one of the first high priests. So anyway, yeah, as you know, the Pharaoh, who they don't know who he is in the Bible. I know Ramses the Great is a you know, guy that they always talk about, might be the Pharaoh in the Exodus. They don't know who he was. But the Pharaoh wouldn't relent. He wouldn't let you know, the Israelites go. Uh, and so, as you know, God put the ten plagues uh, on Egypt. So, yeah, he's raised as an Egyptian prince. Uh, don't forget also about Moses. Moses is considered the greatest prophet in Judaism. He's a prophet also in, I think in Islam, they kind of look up to him. And uh, Christians also rever Moses a lot because uh, Moses is the one that's the great lawgiver, the one that gave us the Ten Commandments, wrote it down, uh, the Mosaic Law, that they sometimes call it uh, as well. But yeah, the Ten Plagues, that's something that was put on Egypt, of course, by God. Uh, and um, I've got the 10 plagues I'll put on the screen for you. But these are the 10 plagues, supposedly, in the Bible, of course, in the Exodus story. The river turns to blood. That was the first one. Frogs, lice, flies, pestilence, uh, boils on the skin, hail and fire, locusts, dark, darkness, no sunlight. And, of course, the last one, the death of the firstborn male. And of course, and that was the one, the last one, number 10, of course, was the one that Moses was able to flee his people. The Pharaoh relented after that. And, you know, his own son, I think, died. And uh, so that's what, what led to that, uh, them eventually leaving. Uh, that last one, the death of the firstborn male, that's kind of where they get the term Passover from, if you know about that, which Passover today is a famous Jewish holiday. Uh, they celebrate every spring. It's the worst meal you'll ever eat, too. Passover Seder, God. Uh, and uh, anyway, um, if you know about it in the Bible, Moses is told by God to put lamb's blood on the, their door frames uh, and that the angel of death would pass over their house and not kill them. And of course, the Egyptians, all their firstborn males died, I think, including their cattle and other stuff, too, as well. The Pharaoh's main son you know, died and that's what you know got them to leave. And so Moses then took the Israelites eastward, you know, across the Red Sea, you know about that, 
uh, into the Mount Sinai, to, to the Sinai Desert, where they wander for years, uh, and eventually takes takes them back to, of course, Mount Sinai. Uh, and my, Mount Sinai is located in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula. It's part of Egypt today. Uh, and um, it has different names. Uh, in the Bible, the original name it was called was Mount Horeb. That's the name you see first. And they also start calling it Mount Sinai. It's almost 8,000 feet tall, uh, the mountain. You may have seen in the video I showed you that documentary. They showed, you know, it's near that monastery of St. Catherine you saw. Uh, and um, the Arabs also call it Jebel Musa, which means um, Mountain of Moses or Moses Mountain or something like that. Uh, and there's a big debate about where it is. Some people think it's right there. There's another theory that some Arabs actually think it was maybe close to Saudi Arabia. So it's a big debate about where it is, you know, Mount Sinai. But most think it's like in the southern part uh, where that, that monastery is I told you about. You saw in the video. Of course, Moses goes up on that mountain, if you know about it, and eventually writes down the Ten Commandments, which was written on two tablets as you know, uh, and so that's why, you know, Moses is seen as the great lawgiver um, in um, Mosaic law. Uh, some some Jews even think he started writing down some parts of the, you know, the Bible, uh, like, uh, Bible, of course, there's a big theory for a long time that the five books of Moses, the first five books in the Old Testament, were written by Moses. Uh, people believe that for years, uh, but... Um, a lot of scholars have kind of figured out that they don't think that's quite true because uh, there's different, um, apparently there's different interpretations of the, how they use the word God was written by different people. And so they think that some sections may have been written by Moses and then other writers may have written later parts of it as well. So, but it's attributed to him. And a lot of the uh, oral tradition, uh, the oral Torah, they call it later the Talmud, you know about that, uh, may have been started by Moses, they think, originally. Um, so, um, so yeah, Moses, of course, on that mountain, uh, you know, uh, and, um, let's see what other slides I've got here. Yeah, it took 40 years, you know, they were wandering in the desert there, of course, but, uh, at Mount Sinai, uh, which I need to talk about, it's not in that slide, um, right there, but, uh, they also build the Ark of the Covenant, you know, about this, uh, which is, this chest, this wooden chest that was, you know, told uh, that Moses was told by God to build to put the tablets of the Ten Commandments in it, uh, and um, had this gold top to it, with these little baby angels on it called cherubs. You know about that, and um, they think the ark. They think the uh, Ten Commandments went in there. They think that some other stuff may have gone in there. Maybe at one point, like the Aaron's rod, maybe went in there and. So you'll think like a jar of manna or jars of manna. I, mean, I don't know if that was really true about the manna. They have been put in it. And um, the Ark of the Covenant was uh, an interesting thing. It was uh, almost like a weapon that they had. The Israelites, if you read about the Bible, uh, they'd literally take it across a river and the river would part, you know, magically. Uh, or enemies would take it uh, and bad things would happen to them. So they had to give it back <laughs> and stuff like that. It's kind of crazy. I don't know if I believe those stories uh, in there in the Bible, but um, they did put it in this mobile tent originally, which was called the Holy of Holies, or also called the Tabernacle, is what they called it as well. Everywhere they went, uh, you know, the Israelites were kind of nomadic people. They would take it with them. And uh, the belief among the Israelites uh, was that um, that the uh, presence of God, like the God, the Spirit of God dwelled in it, like in the tent. I think they called it Sheki, Shekinah, Shekinah. So they call the spirit of God or divine presence of God uh, that was in it. Uh, later, uh, when they built the temple of, you know, Solomon, you know, the temple of Jerusalem, uh, they would have a tabernacle uh, area, uh, the Holy of Holies room where they would put it in, the Ark of the Covenant. And I think that's why the Dome of the Rock, around where the Dome of the Rock is, there's a um, famous area up in there they have that rock. Some people think that maybe that might be around where the tabernacle was, they think, anyway. 
Now, after the death of Moses, um, what happened was um, Moses didn't take him to the promised land, you know, Canaan, you know, he died. Although Moses, if you know about it, did send some, sp uh, some spies to go in there, uh, like Caleb and Joshua and a few others went in there to, to see what, what was there. They told Moses it was like the land of milk and honey and they ought to go settle there. Uh, and so Joshua, who was mostly a, like a leader of their military general of the Israelites, he would lead them back to Canaan. Uh, and Joshua was the one that would take Jericho. I mean, remember the Battle of Jericho? Uh, and Jericho became like one of their first cities uh, that they would settle and live, um, of course, in, in that area. Uh, and um, so that was how they got back, you know, to Israel at that point. When was that? Uh, that's kind of debated about when that is, but it may have been like close to the, about the 13th century, maybe, of when they returned, maybe, to there. It's kind of debated about when it was. Now, after that, then within a, you know, a couple hundred years, they think that the United Kingdom of Israel then formed, like maybe around the 11th century, uh, roughly. So you got this new state. Uh, that comes in. Uh, and this was, of course, a state that uh, formed uh, out of different tribes, all the all the tribes uh, that were part of Israel. I think I've got a map showing you the one on the left. They think that's where the kingdom of Israel was uh, at one point, um, which you can see, which it included actually part of Israel and Jordan uh, is where it was. And you can see all these people that were around them, Arameans, Ammon, Moab, Edom, Edomites, Philistines over here. Uh, and uh, so um, that was the, how big it got at one point. And then later it would kind of, you see, break up and it would have uh, multiple states later uh, that would form. And uh, they had three major kings uh, that the Israelites had. So they had three major kings uh, overall. Uh, as you can see there, you know, you got... Saul, David, and Solomon. Those are the kings that everybody's pretty much heard of um, overall. And um, Saul was the first king. I've got the dates on. I don't know if those dates kind of, you got to run if those are really right or not. But you can see that Saul reigned at the end of the 11th century BC, uh, roughly. Saul was, so he was the first king. Saul's important because he's the one that united all the 12 tribes uh, into one state. Uh, originally, uh, and um, he was like the one of the three that was the least famous. Um, some people still, you know, like the name Saul, but um, he was the least famous of the kings and probably not as successful. Uh, in fact, he died in battle fighting against the Philistines, who were one of the chief enemies uh, of the Israelites. Uh, and um, like the Palestinians, you know, they sometimes use that name Philistine with their name, but the, they're not related. The, the Philistines aren't around anymore. But um, the um, Saul got killed in battle. He actually killed himself. Uh, I think it was the Battle of Mount Gilboa. He died around 1010 fighting the Philistines. And so because he was dead, the throne then went to uh, eventually to one of his um, son-in-laws that would take over, who was like one of his military leaders under him, a general named King David. Of course, everybody's heard of. Uh, Saul, by the way, was from the house of Benjamin, uh, and David was from the house of Judah. They're from different, uh, like different tribes, you know, uh, basically. Uh, and they also called the house of David, uh, his tribe of Judah. But um David was a great military leader, like I'm saying. Uh, and um, David was known for the David and Goliath story. I think everybody's heard about that uh, overall. Uh, and um, you know about the story, there was this giant named Goliath, uh, and nobody wanted to fight him. They were fighting against the Philistines. He was a Philistine giant. Uh, and David said he was like a young kid. He, 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 I'll fight him. So he got the slingshot out, you know, shot shot it at him, killed him, cut his head off, you know, and that's the famous story. Uh, and, of course, if you know about it, Michelangelo made a famous statue of it, statue of David, it's well known. One of the most famous statues of that, of course, famous event. It's also known for 
you know, like you saw in that video, winning a lot of military victories over his enemies and expanding the state. Um, you see in that map uh, that I just showed you um, on the next page, um, let me go back to it real quick here, but you can see the map there um, on, the, on the left. That was believed to be the kingdom of David and later Solomon uh, that basically ruled. Uh, yeah. Oh, and one more thing, of course, also too about um, uh, about David. Uh, David, um, you know, was the one they think that founds the capital of Jerusalem. That becomes the capital of of the United Kingdom, and then later it's the capital of the Kingdom of Judah, as well. That follows um, later on. Uh, then you've got, of course, uh, David's son, uh, which is King Solomon. Of course, everybody's heard of him. Uh, he reigned down more to the mid part of the 10th century overall. And, uh, oh, I forgot to talk about, I forgot about that too. Uh, there, uh, he's, uh, of course, the um, the son of also um, David's wife. I had to talk about, you've heard of Bathsheba. I think everybody's heard of her famous uh, queen, of course, of the Israelites, Bathsheba. Uh, and um, Solomon was considered the peak ruler of the United Kingdom of Israel. Uh, he uh, was the most wealthiest of the rulers. He was considered to be supposedly wise, like real smart uh, and all of that. Uh, but he had a weak point. You probably know what it is. Yeah, a lot of women. <laughs> a lot of women. I think like 300-something wives and concubines. And, and all. he was kind of like Ramses the Great, I guess, kind of trying to compete you know, <laughs> and all that. And he's probably a little, really considered to be the last great you know, king that they really have of uh, the United Israelite state. You always hear about King Solomon's mines and all that. People are trying to find them, and they've made movies about it. You've probably seen those uh, and all that, which are which are kind of famous. Uh, you know, uh, his greatest feat. You know, King Solomon was building the Temple of, uh, of Solomon, uh, the first temple uh, in Jerusalem, which um, was, I think forget what when it was built exactly, but. I think it was completed close to maybe 950 uh, BC, may have been when it was constructed. That's the temple you see uh, on the Temple Mount. Uh, it's kind of in the background there, I think. That's kind of back there, what you think it was, uh, in the old Jerusalem, of course. And so he constructed it. They think they may have used artisans from like Phoenicia that may have been involved in the construction of it. And of course, it's famous for having the uh, tabernacle in it uh, where they house the the Ark of the Covenant. And if you know about it, this week is um, the, uh, the High Holy Days in Judaism. You know, between, I think we're kind of between right now, Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year, and Yom Kippur. Uh, and suppose that's the only time that a high priest could go in there uh, and you know, go go in, go in there and say, Yahweh, <laughs> supposedly, say of the name, or so, of God, supposedly, or something like that. So, so anyway, um, now, uh, King, uh, Solomon would eventually die. So he would die. You see there, uh, it says that Solomon died in 922, uh, roughly. And uh, the kingdom would split, if you know about this. He had a son, uh, of course, who went by the name of uh, Rehoboam, who would take over. Uh, there was kind of controversy over, like, you know, uh, who should be the king, I think. Uh, one of the things that really split them, though, was taxes. Taxes was a big problem. Apparently Solomon and his son, uh, uh, Rehoboam, had increased taxes a lot. Here's a slide on Saul if you want to look at some of these later that I have in here. If you want to look at them. Uh, we're kind of just talking about them. David, yeah, was a writer in the Bible. He did write, they think, the book of Psalms, some of that. Solomon was a writer, too. Uh, by the way, Solomon may have written some of the song, song of songs, or songs of Solomon. You heard about in the Bible, uh, Psalms of Solomon. Yeah, uh, that of course are very famous. So he's famous for his proverbs, wise sayings, and and things like that. But yeah, after Solomon, you know, they began to break up uh, and all of that, uh, and they split. They split into you know two tribes. You know, two, excuse me, not two tribes, two states. Uh, that would be there. In the north, they would have the king, kingdom of Israel. Uh, that should be um, just spelled wrong. Uh, and um, yeah, the kingdom of Israel. Uh, and um, 
it's called also sometimes Samaria is what they call it, actually. Samaria. Yeah, Samaria, because that was its capital, uh, which is located in the northern part of the West Bank. Uh, basically, it's about where it is. Now, there was a minister of King Solomon that kind of broke away. And so most of the 10 tribes would join it, uh, of that particular uh, state uh, that'll be there in the north. His name was King Jerob Jeroboam. It rhymes with Rehoboam. They're kind of, kind of similar, but they're not related. You be wondering about that because uh, Jeroboam was some kind of minister under Solomon. And then Rehoboam was the son of King Solomon that you have. And they're all, and then you basically have the dynasty of these Israelite kings that kind of follow afterwards that rule both states over time. And then you got your kingdom of Judah, you know, of course, the one in the south, you know, that forms. Uh, and it's got the capital of Jerusalem, which it keeps. It's called kingdom of Judah because Judah was the main, you know, tribe that controlled it. And uh, the other tribe that was with the kingdom of Judah that stayed with them was Benjamin. Of course, that was because of Saul uh, and his relatives and all that. So, uh, so uh, anyway, um, um, so yeah, here's a map showing you what happens. You know, the states kind of divide uh, at that point. Uh, you can you see that. Uh, yeah, most of the West Bank is pretty much where the kingdom of Judah was, and like parts of. Northern Israel, upper part of the West Bank, I guess, was where the other state was. But Samaria is the capital of the kingdom of Israel, and then Jerusalem is the capital of the kingdom of Judah. Now, what happened to those states? Uh, that's, of course, is a big question that people always talk about. Well, the first one, which, of course, was the uh, Israelite state. We're talking of Samaria, the kingdom of Israel. Uh, it lasted till the uh, end of the 8th century B.C. I've probably talked about this already before. But the Assyrian Empire under King Sargon II, his father, Tiglath Pelazar III, eventually destroyed a lot of the Assyrian, a lot of the um, Israelite tribes that were in the north. And they were deported. If you remember correctly, we had talked about how they had the so called 10 lost tribes of Israel uh, and all that. They deported them back to uh, Assyria, where a lot of them, I guess, became part of that, that state. Uh, and they, most of them didn't come back. If someone did, they, they joined Judah later uh, as well. So that's what happened to that state. Uh, then Judah survived as a vassal state of the Assyrian Empire. Uh, and uh, if you know about Judah, Judah, the reason why it survived was Judah had um, a lot of olive oil, which they produced, which I guess they sold to the Assyrians and others. Uh, and so um, that kind of enabled them to kind of survive uh, as a state, but it wasn't as powerful as the previous state uh, that existed before. They still had the capital Jerusalem uh, they had. But what happened uh, is that eventually in the 580s BC, uh, it eventually got conquered uh, by Nebuchadnezzar, remember the king of the Neo Babylonian Empire, uh, the Chaldeans, the Chaldean Semitic people uh, of Babylonia, uh, and he destroyed the kingdom of, he destroyed the, the Temple of Solomon, destroyed it. And then what happened was that led to the uh, so-called, you know, Babylonian captivity where a lot of the Jews, which were the remnants of the kingdom, the kingdom of Judah, uh, kingdom of Judah uh, that was there, uh, which I messed up on there too, um, kingdom of Judah. And um, they, were, uh, they were under captivity for something like 40, 50 years. Uh, that they were there, and they actually would be freed later. If you read about it, st studying about the, uh, about the Persian Empire, they were later freed by King Cyrus the Great when he conquered Mesopotamia. Uh, so he freed them from captivity because the Persian Empire was kind of liberal when it came to people having different religions and stuff like that. And so they allowed the you know the Jews to practice their religion freely and move around freely, and allowed them actually to go back to to where. Israel, Canaan, you know, and you go back there uh, and eventually they would rebuild another temple, the second temple, which was, I think, they think eventually completed around 516 B.C. So now they'll be around for a while. Yeah, they, uh, Israel, uh, the, uh, um, the Jews kind of survive as a people uh, for a while, uh, like they have their own states for a while. You may have heard of the Hasmonean Hus uh, kingdom that may have been around uh, for a while. 
that survived as a state, um, but they were mostly under the control of foreign powers, like the Greeks and the Seleucid Empire, uh, which would kind of come in later. Uh, and then when the Romans would come in, they would take over the region as well. And they eventually destroyed the second temple uh, in 70 BC. That leads to the Jewish uh, diaspora where the Jews are forced uh, they dispersed all over the Mediterranean region. So that's why Jews end up in other countries like in Spain and Germany and France and England because of the fact that they spread throughout the Roman Empire, you know, even in Italy and so on. So it's kind of a history of the, the ancient Israelites uh, and how they became the Jewish people uh, over time. Uh, and without the temple, you know, Jews progressed to um, modern Judaism, uh, which is now based around a synagogue, as you know. Uh, and, of course, the leaders aren't high priests anymore. They're rabbis, which a rabbi is like a, kind of like a teacher, but kind of what the word rabbi means. Uh, and he's kind of considered like a, a, a leader, a religious leader, you know, among, among like the Jewish different, you know, synagogues and all that. Now, um, I'll talk later about the Roman world and we'll talk about the Roman Jewish, the Jewish Roman wars that break out like in Israel uh, under, under the Romans. So the Romans later didn't, they hated the Jews. I don't know if you know that or not. So it's kind of ironic that they adopted Christianity later because, you know, Jesus of Nazareth was a Jew and all that, but the Romans hated the Jews, fought a lot of war, like three wars against them, killed a lot of their people too, uh, also as well. So anyway, um, let me go ahead. Now, the last thing, of course, I need to do is I need to review. I guess I'll go ahead and I'll uh, review the last sections I do have, um, of course, that we did today. So who are the Israelites? Uh, the Israelites, of course, uh, were Semitic peoples of Canaan, uh, where modern Israel is today and part of Jordan. And they were a, a type of people that were known for monotheism. They developed like a type of religion uh, that was based on one God, which the God was, of course, named Yahweh or Jehovah later. Uh, and um, this eventually emerged into a new religion later that was called Judaism, which they think may have started uh, under Abraham. Uh, what's the Hebrew name used for the Jews for the entire Old Testament? Uh, the Tanakh. I told you it's what they call it, Hebrew Bible. Uh, and in Old Testament, it's more like a Christian name. It was developed later because of the New Testament. Uh, Hebrew name for the five books of Moses, Torah, of course, is the common name. Of course, they call it the law sometimes. Uh, and, uh, of course, I told you the Greek name was Pentateuch, which means five books. Uh, who are the three early patriarchs in Genesis that are most important ones uh, in Genesis? Uh, those, of course, are uh, Abraham, the father of many nations, the founder of the Arabs and Jews, uh, his son Isaac, who the Jews are related to, and then Jacob, of course, the one that the 12 tribes of Israel, his sons, are all related to. I wouldn't worry about memorizing all the 12 tribes and all that. Um, which son of Jacob was enslaved in Egypt by his brothers? That was Joseph. It's, of course, a famous story of Joseph in the kind of at the end of the book of Genesis, it kind of describes how, you know, uh, the Israelites or Hebrews migrated to um, Egypt, famines, and of course, because of that story. What was the story of the Exodus? The Exodus story, of course, uh, was where uh, the Israelites had been enslaved by the uh, Egyptians, and the prophet Moses freed them uh, from slavery. Uh, and um, of course, he becomes the main hero of the story. Uh, and because of the uh, 10 plagues, uh, he's able to eventually free them. What is Passover? Passover is a famous Jewish holiday uh, which celebrates the Exodus story. Uh, it's kind of a bittersweet story, you know, a holiday. Uh, and, but the word, term Passover originated from the 10th plague, you know, the death of the firstborn male uh, when the angel of death passed over, you know, the Israelites' houses and didn't kill them. Uh, what mountain did Moses bring the Israelites to? Of course, where he broke down the Ten Commandments. Um, 
that, of course, is Mount Sinai. I told you it's got all kinds of names, but Mount Sinai is, of course, the common name. And of course, I tell you the other name is Horeb, and Jebel Musa is the Arabic name. What was the Ark of the Covenant? Uh, the Ark of the Covenant, of course, uh, is the chest that Moses built uh, to house the Ten Commandments. Uh, it was considered very holy, and it was later put, like I told you, into that tabernacle, which was later you know, put into the Temple of Solomon when King Solomon built it in Jerusalem. Uh, who were the main kings of Israel? What were they famous for? Saul, King Saul, was the one that united uh, the tri united all the tribes into one kingdom. I told you which was sometime at the end of the 11th century B.C. Saul was killed and his son-in-law, uh, David, took over. David, of course, was famous for being a great military leader. I told you about the whole story about David and Goliath. Um, he also is the one that founded the capital of the kingdom of Israel, of the United Kingdom of Israel, later Judah, which was Jerusalem. Uh, then, of course, don't forget Solomon. Solomon was the other one, the last one, major one. Solomon was, of course, the greatest one, peak ruler uh, of, of course, the Israelite state. Uh, and he was famous for being wise, wealthy. Uh, he was the one, of course, that built the, t uh, the Temple of Solomon, the first Temple of Jerusalem uh, in the mid-10th century B.C. And then uh, also uh, after he died, uh, remember the kingdom split in half. Uh, and what happened was uh, Jeroboam, one of Solomon's ministers, formed the kingdom of Israel, uh, which was sometimes called Samaria, uh, and that was in northern Israel, which included 10 of the tribes, and it was based around a capital called Samaria. The other state was continued, like the rest of the, the original state, uh, became the kingdom of Judah, uh, and it was ruled by Re Rehoboam, one of Solomon's sons. Uh, and um, those two states, I told you, would continue for so many years separately. They never got back together, you know, uh, and uh, Assyria, Assyrians, of course, destroyed most of the northern state of Israel uh, so, and took Samaria uh, by the 720s BC. And then the other state, which was, of course, the kingdom of Judah, was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. He sacked, you know, Solomon's temple uh, and forced the Jews into captivity uh, sometime, they think, in the 580s BC, roughly. So that's pretty much all the you know, the history of the Israelites and like reviewing uh, over that. Uh, if anybody has any, you know, questions uh, about this, uh, you know, lecture today, either let me, you know, let me know whenever you uh, think you can. You know, if you have any questions right now, let me know uh, before we go. But, um, if you know, just go ahead and like, if you've got a comment on Facebook, uh, you can write it in and I can put it up on the screen. Uh, and then, what else was I going to say uh, also? Uh, now, of course, I will talk about a few reminders uh, before we go. So I don't know if I see anything up there yet on Facebook. But I think it's only just uh, Savannah. I don't know if Savannah, if you have a question or not. But if you can, you can just send me a comment later uh, about it. But, uh, yeah, before we go, um, yeah, just a reminder, don't forget, like on YouTube, I am going to post this lecture later. Um, of course, on my YouTube channel. So if you got any questions, comments about it, let me know uh, later on. Um, you remember, you do get bonus points for that, uh, for doing that, of course, overall. Uh, of course, before we go, also, don't forget about completing your assignments. Of course, you got the final exam online you know, quiz you've got to do, uh, which is uh, in quizzes. So make sure you uh, do that, get that done. I'll, I'll send out reminders every day. And I, I think I already did that this morning, but I am going to keep sending out reminders to you. Uh, if you got to, you know, forget about it. <laughs> I'm sure you won't forget about that one because that's you know worth 200 points uh, and all that. So, oh, and don't forget, if you have not turned in your first, you know, vocab assignment, you know, just send it to me, uh, either post it in the speed grader or email it. Uh, to me at my email address uh, and so I could take care of that grade because you don't want to get, get too many zero grades and you know mess your grade up you know for the for the semester. 
So that's it for today. Uh, later, I will be back on, of course, at 1 p.m. I don't know if you want to watch it again. Um, uh, here's a question we got uh, from Savannah. Do you know what tribe did Jeroboam come from? Um, it's a good question. I have to look that up. I'm not sure about that one. I'll look it up and see. I don't really know beforehand, uh, but he might be from the same tribe like as Judah, likely. So I'll look it up and see, and I'll, I'll try to see if I can answer that for you. But um, anyway, so that's it for today. Um, uh, just let me know if you have any uh, comments, questions, of course, about about the um, you know thing, and I'll see you. So y'all take care. Um, I will, of course, uh, be back on, like I said, at 1 p.m. And then, of course, on next week, uh, I believe, which is uh, Monday, I believe that's the 28th, I'll be moving on to talk about ancient India. That's the next topic we'll get to next. So, yeah, likely you're going to have a Canvas quiz coming up on this section, uh, which I'll talk about later. So that's it for today. So uh, y'all take care. It's kind of nasty weather out there today, I know. Uh, but y'all stay safe, and I'll talk to y'all later. So take care. Have a good rest of the week and good weekend coming up. So take care.